Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Muhammad Saiful Bazli bin Sufarin My student ID is 23B1004 In this video, we will be discussing about the meaning of Mahfum Mukhalafa inside the Holy Book of Islam which is the Al-Quran Al-Karim and its implication in Al-Hukum Al-Shari'i The concept of Mahfum Mukhalafa which is the opposition or contradiction which relates a significant relevance in many intellectual domains, specifically in legal discourse, where it serves as a methodology for interpretation and analysis in the Al-Quran. Introduction The interpretation of the holy verses of the Al-Quran is inseparable to the Al-Quran itself. This is because the interpretation is an explanation of the meanings or the purposes of the Quranic verses. Al-Quran frequently uses terminology that are difficult from what society understands, particularly during the time and location where it was rebuilt. In several places, Al-Quran is only discusses broad concepts and prohibition. As a result, verses or pronunciation must be interpreted in order for people to understand the message, intent, and purposes of the Quranic verses. When discussing about the Al-Quran verses, it becomes noticeable that not all of the verses provide a clear meaning. Many verses require a detailed explanation of the laws. This shows that the verses Al-Quran not only convey explicitly and clear understanding, but also hint meanings that require a special attention. Mafum Mukhalafa is a methodology for proving a hukum by using the opposite meaning of the hukum as explicitly stated in the text, which is the Al-Quran. It, it is also known as Dalil Al-Khitab or an indirect evidence of the Al-Quran. The Hanafis reject this way of proving a hukum while the Shafi'is, on the other hand, divided into various groups of Mafum Mukhalafa, which can be known as number one, Mafum Laqab, number two, Mafum Asifa, three, Mafum Ashar, four, Mafum Al Ghaya, and number five, Mafum Al Aidat. These groups of Mafum Mukhalafa will be explained briefly later. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Shafi'i Shamudin bin Rasli. My student ID is 23B0822 and today I will be explaining about the definition of mafum al-mukhalafa. The literal meaning of mafum uh, is understanding the common meaning while the literal meaning of al-mukhalafa is divergence which comes from the root word khalafa. Uh, the word khalafa can give out different meaning based on people's interpretation. However, when these two words combine, uh, the the meaning uh, it can give out the different meaning which is highlighting the importance of focusing on the unclear meaning which is called the indirect meaning and it is concluded from the counter indication meaning Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Khairul Hamizan Shah bin Suriman 23B0815 So let's move on to our next content which is the types of mafum mukhalafa so the first type of mafum mukhalafa is called mafum laqab what is mafum laqab mafum laqab means that it is a hukum that is rise because of an existing proper noun or a specific name that exists in the context in the text for example, from a Quranic ayah, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Hurrimat alaykum ummahatikum Which translate to Forbidden unto you are your mothers It prohibits us from marrying our own mothers So the specific name in this ayat is mothers So by way of mafum mukhalafa, It is permitted to marry everyone that we like other than our mothers. So this mafum laqab, most scholars does not agree the usage of this mafum mukhalafa. Why? Because from the example that I've given, we can marry everyone that we like, 
other than our own mothers. That is understanding the ayah by way of mafum khalafa. That is the understanding. But in reality, there are a lot of other people that we as Muslim cannot marry. For example, marriage between the same gender. The second type of mafum al mukhalafa is called mafum as sifa. So what is mafum as sifa? Mafum as sifa it translates to a hukum that is being raised because there is a presence of an attribute or a specific characteristic to a certain category. So an example would be from a surah an nisa, verse twenty five. Awwaz billah min shaitan al rajim. Bismillah rahman al rahim. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ مِنْكُمْ طَوْلًا أَنْ يَنْكِحَ الْمُحْصَنَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ فَمِمَّا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ مِنْ فَتَيَاتِكُمُ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Which translates to But if any of you cannot afford to marry a free believing woman, then let him marry a believing bond woman possessed by one of you. So from this particular ayah, we can see the attribute given to a female slave that is permissible to marry is believing. Believing in this ayat is al-mu'minat. The mafum mukhalafah by way of mafum mukhalafah arise from this ayah is that non-believer female, non-mu'minat female slave is not permissible to marry. So what is permissible is believing bond woman by way of mukhalafah. It is not permissible to marry non-believer female. That's all for mafum asifa. Moving on to the third type of mafum mukhalafah. It is called mafum al ghayah So what is mafum al ghayah Mafum al ghayah it refers to a hukum being raised because there is a limit stated in the text and when this limit is exceeded the opposite hukum is inflicted so for example from surah al-baqarah verse 187 a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim rahim wa kunu ashrabu hatta yatabayyana lakum al-khayt al-abiyad min al-khayt al-aswad min al-fajr which translates to you may eat and drink until you see the light of dawn breaking the darkness of night. This indicates the limit of eating and drinking during the months of Ramadan is until you see the light of dawn. So by using mafum mukhalafa, it is understood from this text that eating and drinking is prohibited after dawn during Ramadan. Mafum ashard is the fourth type of mafum al mukhalafa it refers to when a text is delivered with the existence of a condition same as malay it's called sharat in english we call it condition the hukum will be in effect as long as the conditions the sharat here are met and will cease to avoid so the hukum will cease to be valid when conditions are not met for instance from surah al-nisa verse 25 just like what i've mentioned before a'udhu billah min shaitan rajim bismillah rahman rahim wa man lam yastati' minkum tawlan ay yankiha al-muhsanat al-mu'minat fa mimma malakat aymanukum min fatayatikum al-mu'minat but if any of you cannot afford to marry a free believing woman then let him marry a believing bond woman possessed by one of you through this text the condition that is presented is if there is a conditional clauses there if you cannot afford marrying a free believing woman then a conditional clauses again marry your believing born woman if and then in this text indicates the presence of conditional clauses just like what i've said so by way of mafum khalafa it is haram to marry a believing born woman if it is possible to marry a free believing woman the last type of mafum al-mukhalafah is called mafum al-adad. 
So the hukum in this mafum al adat when the text it contains a specific limit in the form of numbers. So this like the mafum al ghaya there is a presence of limitations but in mafum al adat it is in the form of numbers. It is not permissible and it will be invalid if the amount of numbers exceeds or less than the amount mentioned. As an example from Surah An-Nur, verse number 2, regarding the punishment of those who commit adultery. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Az-zaniyatu az-zani fajlidu kulla wahidun minhuma mi'ata jaldah as for female and male fornicators, give each one of them hundred lashes. So it is clear in this ayah, the hukum for adulterers, female and male fornicators, it is one hundred lashes. So by way of mafum mukhalafah, then if the numbers of lashes exceeds, or the number of lashes it decrease from this limitation. It is not valid. So if the if the adulterer being lashed for one hundred and five, for example, or the adulterers are being lashed ninety lashes, it is not permissible. This is by way of mafum mukhalafa. That is all for my part. Let's move on to the next content. Importance of understanding and knowing Mafum Mukhalafa in the Al Quran. Mafum Mukhalafa in the Al Quran highlights the importance of understanding this topic in order to fully understand the messages or lessons stated in the Al Quran. The knowledge of Mafum Mukhalafa will keep someone from making mistakes when understanding the pronunciation or editorials of the Al Quran. For an instance, there are some people who argue that committing adultery is not prohibited. This is because the Al-Quran only, only prohibits for those who engage in it. These misunderstandings, assumptions, uh, comes from a lack of knowledge and understanding Mafum Mukhalafah and its rules. Opposing this perspective and can be difficult without fundamental understanding and basic knowledge of this particular subject. Misunderstandings and inaccuracies in establishing laws based on the Al-Quran can, avoid, can be avoided with adequate learning and knowledge regarding with this topic. The reason is that Mafum Mukhalafa plays a crucial law in constructing and establishing laws by extracting them from the basis of the Al-Quran. Next, I will be explaining about the condition for Mafum Al-Mukhalafa. There is four types of condition, which is number one, mafum al mukhalafa should not disprove the mantuk evidence or mafum muwafaka evidence because both are stronger evidence. Number two, mantuk is not something that happens so commonly. If the mantuk explains the original law, then the mafum al mukhalafa cannot be used against the text. Number three, the mantuk is not used to support evidence. And number four, which is the last one, the mantuk must be able to stand on its own without relying on others. To conclude this video, principle of Islamic jurisprudence receive a special attention of its high standing it occupies as a science that discloses the objectives of Sharia texts. Verses of the Al-Quran represent a rich legislative source from which the Muslim can learn about essential and important rulings. In this video, we primarily focus on the implication that is the opposite of the apparent meaning of the text which is counter implication its synonyms and hindrances in the end this research we also mention a number of quranic verses attesting to the importance of this concept in providing sharia flexibility and broadening the sources from which sharia proofs which is evidence are derived and that is all from us thank you for watching wa billahi taufiq wal hidayah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.